Well, a very pleasant good day and blessings especially to students, teachers, staff, and parents as a new school year has already begun. You know, I can remember when I was about nine years old, my dad coming into my bedroom on the first day of school and singing the familiar song, School Days, School Days, Dear Old Golden Rule Days, Reading and Writing and Arithmetic. He even whistled that song as I got up and got dressed, getting ready for the inevitable. The first day of school. The problem? I just wasn't ready. Oh, my parents had bought all the school supplies and registered me properly, paying all the required fees. But I still wasn't ready. I just didn't want to give up my summer yet. All the fun with the guys, swimming, snorkeling, riding bicycles, and I remember roller skating and playing kickball. But I still was able to get dressed, get in the car as my mother drove me to school. But you know, as I walked in the door, things changed. I saw my friends. I said hi to several teachers I had previously known. The bell rang. I took my seat and the new year began. And I was loving it. Sure, the homework assignments were not always easy and there may have been times I would rather not have been there. But if I could vote on the entire issue, I would vote yes to loving my school, my teachers, and yes, even the work. Memories of school days conjure up in your mind and mine a flood of other memories that seem to come to the surface in the fall season of the year. From apple butter cooking to youth campfires complete with burned hot dogs and s'mores to crisp, cool fall days. And on the farm, you can hear the familiar sound of the dryers running 24-7. I love that sound. And you recall the oranges and yellows and reds that characterize the fall season of the year. Perhaps you met your spouse on a romantic cool fall evening with leaves descending and that harvest moon peeking through the clouds. And there's so many activities at church, some of which are in preparation for the Advent Christmas season. Lots of fellowship and service to one another and plenty of fun, inspiration, Bible study, special worship services, and growing even closer to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every day. Ah, memories. What would we do without them? How would we thank God if we did not have them? But we do have them. And they're so precious. I remember the day of my confirmation, May 20th, 1962. That's right, it was a long time ago. <laughs> and all eight of us were confirmed. Several have already gone to be with the Lord. I remember my high school graduation, college and seminary graduations as well. I remember the day my wife and I were married in Jefferson City, Missouri on May 13th, 1978. Cherished memories indeed. You have them too. For every one of mine that I've mentioned, you have your own. But these memories, even though they're very special, do not come before the big memory. That's right, the big memory. Moses wrote in the book of Deuteronomy, you shall remember the Lord your God. That's the big memory. Yes, remember that the Lord has forgotten your sins. Have you forgotten that he has forgotten them? The Lord once told Isaiah the prophet, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. In the book of Hebrews it says, and God is talking here, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. That's the big memory the Lord desires you to recall every single day. Indeed, the Lord desires you to remember him before you remember all the fondness of the fall season and of your entire life, for that matter. For you see, the reason that the Lord remembers your sins no more is that he does remember his son. 
he does remember that Jesus died on the cross as a substitute for you. Now, a substitute is a person who takes the place of another, like a class having a substitute teacher. That sub is taking the teacher's place that day. But Jesus, however, has taken your place, not just for a day or two, as though your salvation is in question and there must be things you do to pay for your salvation for the rest of the days. Oh no, Jesus substituted himself for you for eternity, forever. He said from the cross, it is finished. He did not say, I'm half done. Oh no, and you do the rest. No, he said, it is finished. One author has written, the Lord Jesus is everything in redemption. He's both the buyer and the price. When you go to Holy Communion, you are receiving Christ's true body and blood in, with, and under the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of your sins. That's true. But Jesus also said, do this in remembrance of me. He's basically saying, hey guys, don't forget me. Please don't forget me. So while this fall conjures up all kinds of wonderful memories for which you are thankful, please don't forget the big memory. Jesus on a cross as your substitute. And the Lord saying to you, I will remember your sins no more. He remembers you, but he doesn't remember your sins. They were crucified on the cross by Christ as your substitute. He was and is the big offering, the big memory for you and for me. Talk to you, God willing, next week.